Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Ivan, WC2S, and he is building a simple ground plane antenna for the 440 band. That's the uh, uh, 70 centimeter band, which goes from 420 megahertz to 450 megahertz, which is pretty wide band. Most ready-made antennas for that cover the higher part of the band. Now, he actually wants to receive a satellite called the LORA satellite. Fine, okay, I don't know what satellite that is. But the frequencies that come out of the satellite vary from about 401 megahertz to 437 megahertz. Now, 401 is lower than the uh, 70 centimeter ham band. So if you're lower in frequency, that means you're going to need a bigger antenna. Okay, so he has been looking at antennas to build and thinking he might build a 70 centimeter antenna. Okay, and he asks a little, uh, a few questions about this. Let's take a look at this. This is the standard way a vertical antenna is made. This is for 440. <clears throat> this is not very big. This is one quarter lambda. Okay. So if we figure out what that is, let's get our handy calculator. And we do 468. This is for wires. Divided by the frequency in megahertz, uh, let's say 420. Okay, and that is half a wavelength. So we've got to divide that by 2 to get a quarter wavelength. We're at 0.55. Let's multiply that by 12. You might want to do this in metric. And you get uh, uh, this huh, right here is 6.6. .6 6.7, 6 6.7 inches. Okay, like I said, this thing is not very big. Okay, now, normally you would think if this were ground mounted, you'd have your radials out like this, and so on. Okay, and you can make it with some radials. The usual number is four, but you can have several more if you want. You can even put a disc of metal there. And these radials, since they're up in the air, will be the same length, 6.67 inch, okay? Now, a handy way to make this, a handy way to make an antenna like this is with an SO239 connector, okay? This is the solder point where you would solder um, a piece of wire to, and you solder a piece of wire that's 6.7 inches long right to there, just to there. Now right here, you take some wires and you take it and you bend the bottom so that you can solder it to here, which means you need to make it just a titch longer so that from this point right here to the end of the wire is 6.7 inches, okay? You can have four out here. And then your antenna, which will only be about this big, is ready. Now, what you need to do, and what a lot of people do, so put a coax cable on this, and then put this up, put a uh, thread that up, a piece of plastic pipe around this, like three quarter inch or something like that, that will sit right on the top, and you can glue this, and then that piece of pipe you can um, tape that to a mast or uh, use hose clamps or something to a mast, and that would work really well. Now. The questions that he asks um, are, are, are these. Why are, now let's not use green. Some people are colorblind to green. We'll go with purple. Why are vertical antennas not made with straight radials, but rather made with radials that droop down? 
uh, getting the distances right and everything like that. Here's why. A vertical antenna made this way has a feed point impedance of about 30 ohms. Okay? If you bend the radials down like this, you will increase the feed point impedance. Now, you can feed it, if you bend them down like this, you can get close to 50 ohm impedance. And since that's how we're going to feed the antenna, that's the answer. That's why these things bend down. Okay? So very easy. You make one of these. These are five or six bucks for them. This particular one happens to be coated in silver, which makes it easy to solder to. But I'd still use a little bit of, of flux, uh, rosin core flux right there to enable the soldering and make it a lot easier. And if you do put this in a vise, put several layers of cloth around it so you don't damage the threads on this. Otherwise, it's hard to uh, get the cable onto it. Okay, so there's your antenna. Now, the big problem with doing this is that that's a fairly wide range for a simple vertical antenna. There is an alternative which is not much larger, a little more trouble to build. You can actually purchase them if you want to, but you can uh, make them fairly easily yourself. And that is a type of antenna that's called a disc cone. A disc cone. Now, there is a type of antenna. Let's look at a dipole. Okay, here's a dipole. Okay, very good. That's fairly narrow band. Now, one of the things that we have learned from studying dipoles is that the thicker the dipole, the bigger the frequency band. The limit of that is an antenna with two halves, and this is a cone. Okay, this is called a bicone antenna. Right, obviously this is horizontal, you can turn it vertical. This length has to be long enough to support the lowest frequency that you're going to use. And then this antenna will also have a very nice low SWR on any frequency higher than this. And the idea being that the energy tends to kind of seek its right distance here. Nobody that I've heard of has come up with a really good explanation of why these work. Now, we can take one half of this off. We'll turn it this way. And we'll put a disc around the top. Okay. Now... You don't need, you can, but you don't need to make these out of pieces of metal. For an antenna as small as this, it might work too, but what people often do is they'll just put wires of the right length out here. Okay, a bunch of wires. All right, and for down here, a bunch of wires. Okay, this is a disc cone. Now, the disc cone, if you look over here, this is a picture of a disc cone sold by ICOM, I believe. And here's your mast. You have to take this off to connect the cable, and then this will connect to another mast. You see you've got the part at the top, and this is the disc coming down here. Another way of looking at this is this way. You've got your disc at the top, the center conductor of your cable, is connected to these, and the outer conductor of the cable is connected to these right here, okay, which form a kind of a disc. Now, let's look at some specifications for this from the antenna book. 
<clears throat> this is how you would actually make a discone if you wanted to. It suggests using hardware cloth. Hardware cloth is hardware where it's got lines about a half inch apart and they're woven together. You can buy this at any um, uh, supply goods uh, like Home Depot or Ace Hardware or someplace like that. And if you cut a piece with these dimensions here and another piece like this and follow these instructions in here, you can make one that's actually a nice disc. Now, note that again. This is, see it says PVC pipe there, coax cable. And uh, this has got this uh, fixed up right here to where this piece comes back around here, you can solder it so that it forms a disc. Given that these are only a little over six inches long, seven or eight inches long, this is a pretty small antenna, okay? Now there's a formula right here. The length in feet, the L here, it's 270 over the frequency in megahertz, okay? And where that frequency is the lowest frequency, of operation. Over here, we've got the distance across the diameter, B, is 0.67 or two-thirds that of um, L. Okay? And so you figure out what your L is. For you, you'd make it about 400 megahertz. Okay? And then figure these and you can put this thing together. Now, you can find instructions for making your own discone. There's um, another way of uh, doing it. You know, I mean, you could put this kind of thing right at the center of it so that it comes up and is soldered right there at the uh, center. Okay, right there at the center. And the outer part is connected to here. And you're only limited by your own inventiveness. The nice thing about this antenna is it has unity gain across a very wide frequency band. And if you take this down to, say, 400 megahertz, then you're going to pick up all the frequencies that are involved in your LoRa set here, okay? From 401 megahertz to 437 megahertz, you will have unity gain across all of that. Okay, now if you build the antenna where it's a vertical, uh, you will find that the gain will tend to go like this, and this will be the bandwidth, the 3 dB points down here. And you'd have to model the antenna to tell what that is. The vertical is obviously easier. The disc cone is also vertically polarized, and will work across that wide bandwidth. So there you have it. There you've got some options. You can go the discount route. You could buy that one that ICOM makes from DX Engineering. Uh, you'll, have, <laughs> you'll pay for it. It's a little more expensive. Uh, if you buy a standard uh, disc cone off the shelf, you tend to find that they're made for two meters. Now, will they work on 440? Absolutely, they will. You could do that too, especially if you happen to have one already. You could even trim it a little bit if you wanted to, to make it even smaller. So I would start with the vertical, see how well that works, see what the SWR is at various points on that. That'll give you an idea of the received bandwidth for that. I'd like to uh, pay special uh, heed, uh, pay special attention to Nicholas Stenger, who is a patron on patreon.com for this channel. That means uh, he gives a couple bucks or a little bit more every month that comes to this channel and helps fund it. Uh, also, if you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Or if you'd like, you can go to decastler.com slash support for some additional ways that you can do that. Thank you very much for that. And until we next meet, 73.